Then we have the inventory systems. There are two inventory systems in accounting for inventories. We have the periodic system and we have the perpetual system. So what's the difference between the periodic and the perpetual? So if it's a periodic system, physical counting of goods on hand will determine the quantities. So there's a need to conduct a physical counting. In order for us to know, pila man ang inventory end. But in a perpetual system, although required magihapon ang physical counting, but if we want to know how much is our inventory, we don't need to count them because it's already recorded in the inventory account. Because in the perpetual system, we have the maintenance of record called the stock cards that contain the running summary of the inventory. But for uh, verification, kung ni tugma ba ang physical count o ang record, mag-conduct gihapon tag counting sa inventories. But mas um, convenient lang sa perpetual kay naan na may records. Di naman kinahanglan nga mo adto pa ka dito sa warehouse, mag-count ka pila may nabilin. Unlike sa periodic system, you will only know pila ang inventory and kung i-count ni mo ang goods nga on hand. For the periodic system, it gives actual or physical inventories because only those nga nabilin mo ay mapart sa inventory end. Perpetual system gives us the book or perpetual inventories. It's based on the running balance. For periodic system, uh, it uses the terms purchases, purchase returns, and freight in accounts. Meanwhile, the perpetual system will use inventory for purchases, purchase returns, freight in, or in, it, this includes also the purchase discounts. So, katong na ay mga terms na purchase, purchase, purchases, purchase returns, purchase allowance, purchase discounts, instead nga ka na ang gamiton, inventory ang gamiton nga account. Also, for freight in, inventory po ng gamiton nga account. For the periodic system, the cost is determined after physical count is performed because na ay formula to get the cost of goods sold. But in the perpetual system, you can determine immediately how much is the cost because there is a cost of sales or cost of goods sold nga account. Then also, Periodic system is used when the inventory items have small peso investment like groceries, hardware, and auto parts. Meanwhile, perpetual system is used for relatively large peso investment, for example, jewelry and cards and cars. Here is an illustration for periodic and perpetual systems. So we have the transactions here. And then we have the journal entries. So we have for number one, purchase of merchandise on account for 300,000. So that would be debit to purchases and credit accounts payable 300,000. If it is a perpetual system, instead of using purchases, you're going to use inventory account. So that's the only difference. For number two, purchase of freight sorry payment of freight on the purchase you have twenty thousand so freight in credit cash under periodic system but on the perpetual system instead of freight in you're going to use inventory number three return of merchandise purchase to a supplier so we have accounts payable credit purchase return in the perpetual system instead of using purchase return we're going to credit inventory there's a sale of merchandise on account for 400000 at 40% gross profit. So for periodic system, we have accounts receivable, credit sales. Under perpetual system, the same accounts receivable and credit sales, but there's an additional entry to record the cost of goods sold. So since the gross profit is 40%, the cost ratio here is 60%. Tong complement sa 40%. So ang cost is 60%. So therefore, 60% of 400,000 is 240,000. So debit cost of goods sold, credit inventory, 240,000. So at this point, we already know that the cost of the sales that we had is 240,000. 
Number five, return of merchandise sold from customer. So debit, sales returns, and credit accounts receivable. The same entry under perpetual system but with an additional entry. Since the customer returned goods, so giuli sa ato so i-restore na to ang inventory. But we need to get the cost of the inventory. Remember, the worth of the inventory returned is here, nga gi-record na to is 25,000 but that is with the gross profit. So apil ang yahang ah uh, ginan siya. So, we need to get the cost nga portion. So, pila ganitong cost ratio pagbaligya, 60%. Nga 60 because the gross profit rate is 40%. So, therefore, 25,000 times 60%. So, that's 15,000. And because of this entry, ma-reduce ang atong cost of goods sold. Of course, since wala man siya madayon o baligya, so dapat makuhaan po ang cost sa pagbaligya. Then, we have adjustment of ending inventory for 65,000. So, this is based on the physical count. So, inventory end and credit income summary 65,000. For perpetual inventory system, we don't need to prepare an entry anymore because if we're going to trace the transactions here, 300 plus 20 minus 30 minus 240 plus 15, you will arrive at 65,000 na inventory end. So, manan siya nga automatic, makompute na nato. Dili na kinahanglan nga mag physical count just to know how much is our inventory ending balance. Then, we have the shortage or overage. So, it will arise when the physical count does not coincide with the records, especially if we're using the uh, perpetual inventory system. Diba? Ang records na to, to 65,000, what if dili siya mutunong sa physical count? What if mas lesser ang physical count or mas greater ang physical count? So, unsa na physical count, katong i-count yun ni mo pilay na bilin. Para sa kunang pag sugod ni mo sa mong adlaw na kay 10 ka ball pen unya uh, wala na ka nag take note pila to nahalin pero you want to know o pila man ang ato ang cost of goods sold o pila ang atong inventory end so to know the inventory end you will count how many ball pens are left so if the ball pens that are left is tulo ka buok so this means nga nahalin ang pito Diba? So, ang cost ni mo would be equivalent to 7 ballpens times ang cost sa pagpalit sa ballpen. But if you're using perpetual system, this means nga nagsigi kag record sa transaction kada nahalin. So, mag-take note ka nga na anay pito ka uh, ballpens nga na-sold. So, naturally, madidak na siya daan and then ang mahabilin add to um, auto yung mahimong inventory. So, na nasa imuhang records nga ang balance inventory is tuluka ballpens. So, in the illustration that we had uh, previously, so di ba naaman to 65,000 nga inventory balance based on the journal entry. So, if we're going to trace the transaction, so we have the debits. So, you have transaction 1, 2, and then 5. And then we have uh, credits, we have transaction 3 and then transaction 4. So there's a debit balance of 65,000. So if at the end of the accounting period, a physical count indicates a different amount, an adjustment is necessary to recognize any inventory shortage or overage. So, for example, if the physical account shows that the goods on hand is 55,000, so the adjustment would be inventory shortage and credit inventory. So, this entry will reduce our 65,000 to 55,000. Kaya pag i-credit na ito ang 10,000, makuaan man ng 65, so mahimo na lang siya 55,000. So, this is a shortage because the actual physical count is lesser or short siya compared sa unsa man dapat ang mabilin. Diba? Kung based sa records ang isgutan, dapat ang mabilin is 65,000. But based on the physical count, ang nabilin lang kay 55,000. 
So, therefore, na short or nakulangan og 10,000. What if mabali, ma'am, kung uh, instead of 65, na himo siyang 85, 85,000. So, bali, debit inventory and then credit inventory overage. Okay, 20,000. So, bali, bali siya. So, kung sa may nakita buwan to, kung overage siya, uh, ang actual is mas daghan or ang actual na physical uh, account is mas daghan kumpara sa record. So, therefore, pwede nga uh, na atay wa na or na missed out nga entries and to na atay wala na take note ng mga transaction whether, whether that is a purchase or a sale. So, pwede na atay wala ma uh, take in consideration and to. So, the inventory shortage, going back to the original illustration, this is usually close to the cost of goods sold because this is often a result of normal shrinkage and breakage in the inventory. But if it is an abnormal and material shortage, this will be treated as other expense. So, kung minimal lang ang shortage or shrinkage, part sa cost of goods sold. Uh, this will be included here uh, in the cost of goods sold because na integrate siya sa inventory. Then, for the cost of goods sold, how do we compute that? So, this was mentioned already uh, earlier sa comparison sa periodic and perpetual. For periodic is mag-compute pa ta. So, kinahangla na itong determine ang beginning inventory. Then, we add the net purchases. Diba? The net purchases would be purchases minus the purchase returns minus purchase discounts minus purchase allowance plus freight in. That would be your net purchases. So, the sum would be total goods available for sale and we deduct the physical count. That's why important nga mag-physical count to, de to determine the cost of sales. Kung perpetual system, the cost of goods sold is equivalent to the balance of the cost of goods sold account. And the cost of goods sold account, remember, is updated every time na atay sale o na atay sales returns. Then we have the trade discounts and the cash discounts. What's the difference between the two? First, we have the trade discounts. These are deductions from the list or the catalog price in order to arrive at the invoice price, which is the amount actually charged to the buyer. So, to compute, that would be list price minus the trade discount and that would be equal to the invoice price. So, kaniman, ang trade discount ang induct sa list price. The purpose for trade discounts is to encourage trading or increase sales and also suggest to the buyer the price at which the goods may be resold. Uh, trade discounts also, you need to remember, they don't have a journal entry or dili ni siya i-record as part of the journal entry. Ang ma-record na to ani kay ang invoice price. Meanwhile, cash discounts are deductions from the invoice price when payment is made within the discount period. So therefore, kung nibayad ka within the discount period, na discount nay cash discount. Pag wala ka nibayad within the discount period, so wala ay cash discount. The purpose of cash discounts is to pro to encourage prompt payment. And one difference between trade discounts and cash discount is that the cash discount is recorded. So, recorded as a purchase discount if we are the buyer or a sales discount if we are the seller. So, the purchase discount will be deducted from the purchases to determine the net purchases while the sales discount is deducted from the sales to arrive at the net sales revenue. So, we have an illustration here. The list price of a merchandise purchase is 500000 less 20% and 10% with credit terms of 5 over 10 and 30. So, what, did, what does this mean? So, the list price is our catalog price. Then, this is the amount. Then, 20 and 10, these are our trade discounts. This is the first trade discount and this is the second trade discount. And the terms is 5 over 10 and 30. So, that's 5% cash discount if paid within 10 days. And N30 is the credit 
period. So, the entire invoice should be paid within 30 days. If in case, dili mo take sa, uh, dili mo grab sa discount, uh, wherein bayaran sa sold sa, sa po kaan daw. So, to determine how much is our invoice price, so we need to get the first and trade discount. So, this will be the long form to get the discounts and to get the invoice price. So, you get 20% of the original amount here, the list price. So, that's 100,000. Deduct it from 500,000, you will get the balance of 400,000. The 400,000 will be multiplied with the second trade discount. So, you will get 40,000. And the remaining amount will be our invoice price. If you want to know if there is a cash discount or wala, so you need to take note kung kanus ani bayad ang customer or kanus ata ni bayad kung kita may namalit. So, kung nasood sa so 10 days ang payment, then therefore, there's a cash discount. So, provided nga na ay cash discount, so this will be the computation. So, your discount of 5% will be based on the invoice price and not on the list price. Okay? So, mag-base yun na siya sa invoice price. So, the amount that we're going to pay within the discount period is 342000 Again, if we intend to pay for the amount sa sold sa po kaadla, which is our discount period. So, the journal entries would be debit purchases and credit accounts payable. Observe that the amount used here is our invoice price and not the list price. That's why, you mentioned earlier, nga, we do not record trade discount. Kaya wala may account for trade discount. So, net naman dayon ang i-record. To record the payment within the discount period, so we debit accounts payable. 360,000 so that's equivalent to our invoice price and then we credit cash okay so we credit cash of only 342,000 ah, sorry kaya naan naman siya discount so that's uh, the net amount after you deduct the 18,000 nga cash discount and then purchase discounts of 18 so, this is the side of the buyer. So, kita ang buyer ani nga uh, transaction. But we can compute this using the shortcut. So, dili ta mag compute ani nga ni ka taas. So, pwede siyang dit so on. So, 500,000 times 80%. So, ano 80% man na siya because ang first discount is 20%. So, para makuha ang net kani siya, kani 80%. So, i-multiply siya by 80%. And times 90% in order to get the net of the 10% trade discount. So, mabilin 360. And we want to know, pila man ang mahabilin nga bayro nun kung may nusan o 5% nga discount. So, times 95%. So, that would be 342,000. If you want to know the shortcut nga purchase discount, so that would, that would be 500,000 times 80% times 90% times ditso, the discount rate nga 5%. If you like this video, don't forget to click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be updated with the latest video lessons. Thank you for watching!